And welcome, everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube. For some Sivir Sejuani, now this is our third uh, Sejuani Overwhelm Battle Fury deck for us to try out. So far, the first two have felt great. Now, this one, we're going to be uh, trying it with Sivir instead of Renekton. And um, that's kind of that's going to be basically like the main change here. And Sivir, or R Sivir doesn't have Overwhelm, but Sivir can level up pretty quickly in this deck. And when you have a leveled up Sivir attacking with all of your other things that are large and overwhelmy, and then giving them spell shield and uh, quick attack as well can be just make that just impossible for your opponent to block or really even use removal or anything. And so that's what we're kind of thinking here with Sivir. Um, we're going to try Doomkeeper instead of Omenhawk. Um, Omenhawk has looked good so far, but you don't want to draw Omenhawks late. Doomkeeper is a much, much better draw late, either on offense or defense, than what Omenhawk is. Um, so we'll kind of try that out. Um, then also, since we don't need the challenge as much without Renekton, then we're going to play 1-3 Sisters over the third Ruthless Predator. So those are the only differences with this version from the version we just played. So let's see how Sivir performs. And we'll see how Doomkeeper performs instead of Omenhawk. And uh, yeah, there we go. All right, so let's go play our five games in Ranked. Zoe Aphelios. That's not a deck we play against that much these days. All right, so our first opening hand looks like a good hand to mulligan. Alright, turn one, Zoe. They forced us to choose death or the blade. Lunari, rise! Ready the torches! We'll do the trade. Maybe draw a three drop. There we go. Not the best three drop though. I I wanted Trapper, as far as the three drop goes. Let's just play Doom Keeper. Because then Doomkeeper allows me to kill the Zoe with Ruthless Predator. And yeah, so I'll, I'll buff the 2-1, make it a 4-1 attacking. They should just block with the Solari Priestess. This would have been better as Exhaust. But we got to do some more damage for leveling up Sivir, I suppose. So they're playing Bilgewater. That means they are playing Boxtopus. I think that'd be their two drop. So that's something like, if they like pass, you don't want to just like slam Sivir and have it get eaten up by a Boxtopus. Seen tombs, towns, and everything in between. Daylight star will rule the skies. As though day and night are not equal. After them! I bow to no one. Exhaust is real good. I guess I didn't check to see if this was created by Golden or that was created by Solari Priestess or by the Mountain Scryer. Is that 18? So 18, so that means we need 17 more damage. So everything to level up Sivir. Alright, we're gonna play the Wild Claw. Ooh. That's a good card. Yeah, Sivir would level after, let's see. 
after like that strikes. I guess a level after this strikes too. Just any combination that adds any combination of three that adds in the wild claw. Silver world level. So the thing about them blocking the Sivir is that that's the thing that doesn't have Overwhelm. All the other things have Overwhelm, which puts them, which is a lot of damage coming in at them. No, I I wouldn't have the buff on the th on the six two unless, like, the six two would strike before it would get the buff, right? Like, if I put Sivir last, the six two already hits before the Sivir buff because I need the first th first three things have to strike first, and then the fourth thing gets the buff. And so I want, so that's why I wanted to do it like this, where then the Ruin Runner would get the buff. But of course, there was their one block was having Destroyer block Sivir. It would be the exact same if I would do it the other way, right? If I do Sivir last, the six two would still die here. It kind of it forced them to do that block though. It forced them to put the big thing in front of the Sivir and not, and then take all the overwhelm damage. Yeah, so Sivir attacking last would have dealt one more point of damage to the Destroyer, would have made it an 8-1 instead of an 8-2. I'm gonna play Tavern Keeper, but I'm not exactly sure where. I'm not exactly sure what I want to heal. But I don't want to pass and let them pass, also. I need to spend mana. So I guess Wild Claw worked. Let's talk about your tab. Could have been just like blocking, maybe blocking the destroyer with the, the Sejuani and then playing new Sejuani the next turn. Stand and fight. So if I play this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, still one mana short from battle. This plus battle fury. We're gonna try. Hopefully no hush. Just take it. They haven't cast hush yet. All right, they they will not cast hush, and that's gonna be it. Battle Fury. The Witcher's Claw Getting it done again. Okay, playing some deep again. Uh, I'm gonna mulligan Tavern Keeper also. Even though it is, you know, like the, the three drop we can play on turn three, it doesn't necessarily do that much, to be honest. Or die. Leave 
So because of Sea Scarab, I wanted to play the Ruthless Predator because it matches up against Sea Scarab where these don't. Um, but Thorny Toad's one in deep that you don't see too often anymore because of Sea Scarab. That's, that's another good one. Nothing escapes my watch. So to play Dune Keeper or to wait? I'm gonna wait. Heroes go hungry. Corruption everywhere. It's a living. Ha! Is does attacking with sentry make sense into Sea Scarab? Probably not. We draw the card, which I don't have like anything great to play next turn, so increase my chances of finding something great to play next turn. Okay, prediction started. So maybe I should have. The desert by my side. Attacked with the Avarosan Sentry, that is. So fortunately, the Sivir is permanent vulnerability. I think if I, if I play Sejuani, like, the most likely thing they play is Devour Adepts, I guess. I guess the Sivir is protected by Spell Shield from Devour, but they could have Vile Feast, Devour. No, they can't really do both. Alright, let's play Sejuani. Feel no fear, show no mercy. Words to die by! So they would need double jettison to go deep, which isn't likely, but that would really Stand hurt if they had it. Danger pays. So that's 10, 27, so we're not close to leveling this up. Leave nothing standing. Born for conquest. Azir's command! Ooh, we got some fight here. It's a good card. Helps keep me from leveling up my sever. And then of course I'll also refills their hand. Alright, that's and that's a good draw for us, that three sisters. That that can be useful. I'm not going to use this three sisters. I'm probably just going to battle fury. I mean, I guess if I don't play the Dune Keeper, I could have the flash freeze part available. But so we need what nine damage to level up? Oh, I forgot about Sivir being vulnerable. Oh, I forgot about that. I just for I don't. Yeah, that's my bad. I was thinking of like how I was gonna order. I was gonna put like the two one first before these other things. I mean, I forgot about that. I shouldn't have played this 2-1. That, 
that was a really big mistake playing this because I would have just you know been able to flash freeze that attack and then I would have had Sivir here instead of this two one. So now just cards like Withering Whale, things like that save them. Putting it over here on the Dune Keeper so like one Vile Feast doesn't save them. If I put it, because if I put this on anything else, then they could Vile Feast the Dune Keeper and stay alive at one. That keeps him alive. Well fought. The Isles will bloom again. Not bad. So I either go with the um, the Entomb to get rid of the Nautilus so they can't play more sea monsters. Or I go, or I kind of save this for Fury of the North to help protect Wildclaw against a Vile Feast. I guess this is important because Nautilus's champion spell as well. Because if we let them go the next turn, if they have another Nautilus in hand, they have the, the champion spell is a, a big problem. The problem is, I think that they have Vile Feast for how they were sitting there and thinking for a while last turn. But maybe they don't. Okay, good. I like to see that. The desert by my side. I guess going with Ruin Runner may be safer. Because right now, right now my play to win is, you know, give the 2-1 vulnerable and attack with a 7-3. But then if I play Ruin Runner, they get to Treasure Trove. So is Ruin Runner safer? And let them Treasure Trove? Sand and trouble far at the I kind of think it is. Because just any any interaction spell stops my WoW Claw. They had to have more to stop the spell shield. Yeah, this is a difficult decision of whether to open attack or not. It, Vile Feast doesn't really... Vile Feast is okay. Like, Vile Feast wouldn't save them if I if I go... No, because you need to vulnerable the 2-1 and make sure the one that the 1 health blocks the 7 power. So you have 6 Overwhelm hitting them. That's the important thing. So you, you can't, like, you don't want to vulnerable these things. Because um, if you vulnerable 10-3 and have it, you know you know, challenge over here or something, then 2-5 Maokai gets to block Wild Claw, and then that's only 7, minus 5 is only 2 damage. Yeah, just give it to them. I don't really know why I'm attacking with those, but I also don't really know why I wouldn't attack with those. Yeah, having, having the 7... The seven three attack the ten three. I, I guess you could, but that's that's four damage going in. It makes more sense to have the the more da you want more overwhelm. Draven Ezreal. Okay, let's see how this matchup plays out. Keep Sivir and Troll Chant. Cool. We got Trapper, we got Exhaust. I like it. Good hand. First two turns we can save up Spell Mana for Troll Chant and Exhaust. What's up, Emthor? Oh yeah, always excited for a Seasonal. So we'll see what we get here. All right, no enraged Yeti. Let's put. 
put. Hmm. Yeah, the best play is put in, put another enraged Yeti in there. One, three, five. Tread carefully. You. All right, so they got both their champions. Created three free cards for them so far. It can't be. You've got a problem, I've got a price. I've got a solution. Yeah, this has been a great hand for them. Great hand so far. I'm through waiting. So they can use Spinning Axe to kill that. Or I just go over here and they'd have to trade with one of those. Think spinning Axe is worth. Alright, we'll do the Spinning Axe line. It, does, it takes away their rummage targets. Oh right, because the minus the minus two with the exhaust. Oh, so the spinning axe doesn't work. We got him. We got him. All right, so uh, Ezreal has one uh, attack, one power, and then the uh, um, the exhaust does minus two, minus zero. So it goes to negative one, but it only shows zero. It doesn't show negative one, but it's actually set at negative one, but it shows zero. So whenever they do the spinning axe, it goes up to zero from negative one. Or you're dead. Watch and learn. Brittle steel. Okay. So this needs twenty twenty one to level up. Be fourteen. Seventeen. Let's go. Like this. Now we're cooking. Got an axe with your name on it. Looks like they probably have, I don't know, what, Third Draven for Whirling Death? Maybe Mystic Shot? Look excited. Because now if they use another spell against the Sivir, the, the new spell would just take the Spell Shield, and then, then Sivir would only take four. And there we go. Draven. Blood or gold. I my share. Right, these Sejuani Battle Fury decks are busted. <laughs> we played we played three different decks with just Sejuani Battle Fury, and what are, we're twelve and one over in Masters rank, and we just keep playing against good decks too. And yeah, this is crazy. We lost our very first game too. We've won twelve in a row. Okay, good. Our second time against Thresh Nasus. This is going to be a very good test. Um, yeah, I'm glad we get to play this matchup. Wonder how it goes. And I think I keep Sivir. Sivir matches up very poorly against uh, Thresh, though. 
Yeah, we're we're keeping exhaust. We always keep exhaust. The only time we mulligan exhaust is against Lissandra Trundle. See what we but one spell mana to use as removal against the very best thing and also just make good blockers for you. It's just it's so worth it. It's such a powerful card. The Emperor commands the land obeyed. And I'm not a so I know I could attack and then have them trade, and I get two damage, or I, I guess I only get one damage for Sivir, but they also get one Slay for Nasus. I don't want them getting that free Slay for Nasus. I'll let this thing hit me. I, I'm not going to give that Sand Soldier a, a Slay. Sand and blood. Spears ready. So we get two Slays here. Command the land obey. Hmm. command. So hopefully that makes some of their like sacrifice things worse. Having both those Doom Keepers dead. And now we have our four, five, six curve with double exhaust. I know what I'm worth. you want without mercy it kind of feels like they're trying to work towards ruination or something right like they're not doing anything looks like they really need that thresh could be sitting on black spear black spear doesn't really work against these spell shield units yeah can't really spear, can't ruination. Guess who just her can't win. Alright, we 4 0. Okay, Anivia, the Freljord Shadow Owls control deck. Again, this is the kind of deck that I'm banning. Just like this was our other loss, our one loss today was against Lissandra Trundle. Again, the deck that I said that I'm banning. This same thing, Freljord Shadow Owls control. I would ban this deck on the season in the seasonal tournament. We're going to keep our hand, though. Two, three, four. And so I'll keep Sejuani at six for two reasons. We already have a good two, three, four, so it's not like I need to mulligan it and look for something else cheaper. But then also we do have the attack token on turn six. I could see getting rid of it, though, just because we could find something like Enraged Yeti that would be nice to have, that, like the countdown clock started. The two, three, four are obvious keeps. It's it's the six. Um, but with us having the attack token on six and other good stuff, we'll go ahead and keep Sejuani. Still see far clear. So you could have this ancient Yeti countdown clock start a little earlier. All right, very good defensive hand for our opponent. The trap is set. We'll set the trap. I know what I'm worth. I don't think it's better for me just to pass. I don't. This is four mana they waste. <sighs> Could pass. So all attack helps out um, Avalanche, but I guess it's going to kind of die to the Avalanche anyway. So by attacking, we allowed them to draw two and then also find a catalyst, and now they have a Nevia turn earlier. These stories were true. 
Snow, wind, and ice. Killing that helps out Rekindler. I guess I can open attack, though. Blow winds and crack your cheeks. That's not Rekindler. If they're out there, I'll spot them. Not a reason to put another six drop into play against Ruination. I'll put the Savros and Sentry out there, though. That'll be 26 towards leveling up Sivir. Yeah, I'm thinking plus two on the three one and have the four four block an overwhelm. Like block set twenty. That does mean that I should be doing this. Um, I guess maybe block here. Let's go like this. Oh, nope, stop. Alright, there we go. The first two strike, and then Sivir would level up. So this is them taking 10, going down to 5. Was that a regular Harsh Winds or a Nivea's Harsh Winds? I didn't really pay attention. Okay, it was a regular. Alright, so they have... Alright, so that's... So we know they have another Harsh Winds. Yeah, this is... Unfortunately, this is game here. Looks like this game's over. I bring the storm. So our only two losses today have been against the Freljord Shadow Isles control decks, the decks that I would ban, as I've mentioned That's before. Not... It's not it's not like a Oh well because how the game's played out then you ban it. Like no, like that's would definitely be my decision before. Over there. This pay by the hour. I'm not sure if it's worth trying to save. Yeah, it's got it's got to be worth, right? Shouldn't work. 
Siv yeah, Sivir would have been really nice, but like they would they would harsh winds before I would attack you would think, but Sivir attack you them all spell shield would have been really nice. If they didn't have this Conley Tavern Keeper to heal three. That was close. It just healed through with that Tavern Keeper. Yeah, small chance. They have five cards over there. I don't know what the five cards would have to be that would allow me to win. Maybe just a bunch of harrowings. Okay, four and one. All right, so we ended up going 14 and two total with the Sejuani deck. They all felt awesome. Both of our losses were to Freljord, Shadow Owls, Control. And as I've talked said many times, those are the decks that I will not be playing against in the seasonal tournament. So my opponent shows up with a Freljord, Shadow Isles control deck, it's just getting, it's getting banned. So like that's, <laughs> so we're 14-0 against everything else. Very, very happy about that. Um, you know, can't be better. The only problem is uh, which version to play. They all looked great, right? Like I got to decide like which one of these out of the three. Um, I did really like how Renekton uh, took over games with the Overwhelm and with the Challenge with the Predator and Exhaust. But honestly, Sivir looked good too. Like Sivir did look pretty good too. But I don't know. I don't know about it. I don't know if it looked actually better than Renekton though. I think I would probably lean towards Renekton. But Sivir did um, a lot of stuff, and the Spell Shield is awesome. That is that spell shield is pretty awesome. Thirteen and two. Sorry, I math wrong. Thirteen and two. The one of three sisters. This looks like a great card to have as a one of. Um, it's not a card that I'd want like a lot of copies of because it is very expensive. But it's such a great card to have at, at the end of the game and like at those last turns. Um, it it really is, you know, because it's just all all of these modes are very useful, um, including as we we did multiple times. Um, entombing a very large blocker, right? Like we, like during their turn, like right before we opened attack, you know, we would like entomb a big Nasus or um, or a Nautilus, something like that, and just you know get rid of it so they don't have that huge blocker for my my overwhelm cards, and then go back to our turn, attack with all the overwhelms, use Battle Fury. That was really nice. But if we do play Renekton, you do want like all of the ruthless predators because you really want to be able to give stuff vulnerable for Renekton. So it's hard to fit in the, the three sisters as a one of there with Renekton. I think what I would do with the Renekton version to fit in a three sisters. Let's head on over there. There. What I, what I would do here is I think I'd want to keep the Ruthless Predators, but what I would do is get rid of an Averrosen Sentry. I think that that's the card that we don't really need three of. Because I think turn two quite a bit, you, you kind of want to just play or keep have your spell mana anyway. Um, you have your Ruthless Predator still. Um, getting Having Omen Hawk hit Averroes and Sentry is kind of a bummer also, right? So I think that's what I would do is I would just play two Sentries and fit in a Three Sisters right there. Okay. Uh, but besides that, back to our deck. The other thing to really think about is um, Omen Hawk or 
Dune Keeper. Now, I don't know what the answer to that is. I liked Dune Keeper. Dune Keeper looked good. But Omen Hawk also has looked good. They both one drops have looked really good. And so I, I'm not sure what the answer is to the better one. So those of y'all on YouTube, you know, leave those comments. What which one drop and why is better for these decks? You know, after watching all these games today, Doom Keeper, especially if we go if we play the Renekton version, um, what's better, Doom Keeper or Omen Hawk? Because like Omen Hawk hitting like Renekton or hitting, you know, Ruin Runner. Like all these, all these overwhelmed things is pretty awesome. You'd rather have Omen Hawk on turn one, but you'd rather have because it just buffing up all the other stuff is so important and so valuable. But when you, like later on in the game, you'd rather draw Doom Keeper. So it's tough. So Doom Keeper is probably like less variance. I guess that's that's the way to put it. Is Omen Hawk's higher variance. Like the the goods that Omen Hawk can do is going to be better than the goods that Doom Keeper can do. Um, yeah, you know, whenever you when when you play Omen Hawk on turn one on the defensive turn, and then you untap and you draw Ruthless Raider to play on your turn two attacking, you know, and then you know then you have it for like a Renekton or a Ruin Runner or a Trap or even turning that into a four four or whatever. The highs are going to be better, but then the lows of like drawing Omen Hawk in the late game, it's just a singular one one where Dune Keeper can be two blockers for you or even two attackers or at least attack for two. I'm not sure. But what we do have to say, though, is very, very impressed with the Sejuani Battle Fury decks, for sure. 13-2 record um, is incredible, and, uh, you know, that's, yeah, these decks look good. So, um, we're for sure playing, so, I know out of the three decks, Jarvan, uh, Jarvan Shen, that's definitely going to be one. And now, we definitely know that Sejuani Battle Fury is going to be another. So, that's two, for sure, 100% that I'm playing. So now we got to figure out the third. Probably it's it. The third one's going to be between Azir Nasus and um, Heimer Zoe and Shivana Dragons. It's going to be one of those three. <clears throat> okay, but um, all right, that's going to be it here for Sivir Sejuani. So we uh, also y'all on YouTube, let me know which one of the three versions was your favorite and why. Which one do you think I should play, and why between those three? Um, yeah, I'd love to hear y'all's thoughts on it. All right, but that's all I got here for this deck. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.